On this episode of The Wild Table with the Kiwi Ato in tow, we head to an incredible farm to cook a thank you lunch for the farmers who graciously allowed us to hunt their land all bird season long. While we're there, we of course take the time for another hunt and just on dark, get ourselves a beautiful young red stag on deck. Back home, we cook up the rabbit rotisserie style on our new live fire table and talk a little bit more around the art of live fire cooking. moment we're back at um, one of our sort of favorite farms. These guys have been letting us hunt pheasants here all season. Pheasant season is now finished, sadly, um, but we've got the kiwi out there with us and we've got a whole lot of wild pork meat. Um, so we're gonna go for a hunt and then we're gonna go set up the kiwi out there somewhere, somewhere beautiful on the farm and we're gonna cook for the farmers who run this property. Just as a little bit of a thank you for letting us hunt the entire season because it's just an amazing property and it's been so good for us to to have this available to hunt. So yeah, that's our plan for today. Actually, there's one other species on this property that we can hunt year round. And that's turkeys. And I'm hearing some turkeys right now. It sounds like they're actually not far away. So I think what we might do is we might just have a little bit of a sneak over the horizon over here and see if we can maybe spot some turkeys. It's quite funny because we're sort of standing on the boundary of this property at the moment and there's two mobs of turkeys, one just over here and then one down there. Unfortunately both of these mobs are out of bounds for where we're allowed to shoot. So probably the best we can do really is just keep an eye on them and hope that they might migrate towards where we can shoot them. Tantalizing. Bastards. The turkeys must have known something was afoot because they did not venture back anywhere near us. Or maybe they were just being turkeys and they liked the grub on the other pet. Thankfully for us, these birds aren't the only species on offer here. Here, but uh, it's quite funny. We just drove into this paddock to park the truck, and a uh, little bunny popped out, ran away, and just ran over this little crest. So, thank you, mate. Nice little eating bunny. I got a recipe for this guy that I want to try, so quite happy with that. There you go, cotton towel. Chicken of the fields, they say. Chicken of the fields. Uh, so shot him with a 17 HMR, which in my mind is probably the greatest small game caliber you could choose. Uh, this is a very small projectile, smaller than a 22 but way more punch, way more flat shooting. So I shot this rabbit just now at, I want to say 15 meters. And I shot exactly where I was aiming, but I could have shot the same bunny 80 meters or 100 meters and still be aiming pretty much exactly at the same place. That's, that's what I mean when I say flat shooting caliber. You know, with a 22, you have much more variance because you get so much less gunpowder, so. This might just be me, but even after all these years of hunting, even a humble little cottontail like this still makes me very, very happy. So with Roger Rabbit on deck, we hitch up the Kiwi outdoor and make our way across the stunning vista of this beautiful farm to set up our cam kitchen and light a fire. Our primary reason for coming up here today is actually to cook a meal for the farmers who run this property. On the menu today, is some wild pork from a previous hunt, which I pulled from the freezer just for this occasion. And with the lush pastures of this property as a backdrop, I'm real excited about getting my cook on. We're not gonna include the cooking of that meal in this episode, 
But if you do want to see what we did, just check out our other socials, because most of the time we share the food we cook via shorter reels, including the wild pork barbecue burgers that we made here. And after a delicious and well-received dinner, we decide to make the most of the last little bit of daylight left by taking the deer rifle for a walk at the back of the farm. down now. Well done. <laughs> Beautiful red deer spiker. Well done Jesse. Well done. red red deer here and we're seeing plenty of sign but we've never actually been in the right place to hunt to to um, get a good shot off and so last time I was here hunting for pheasants I scouted this area and I saw some really good uh, sign around here and we were just sitting up on the hill here and um, just waiting because eh, it's just that time right now and sure enough Jesse says there's a deer right in front of me you know the thing is like you were lying down right and you were talking and i was like who the fuck is she talking to me and you're like because can you hear me because i'm like is she, is she on her phone you told so, me right, not right. to move not to shout <laughs> like where where was it when you were um, seeing it i just saw it just coming Up down there walked across yeah me. unreal <laughs> so i'm just walking over there right now there he is Oh man, that is so freaking awesome. So you always, always approach an animal carefully. Oh wow. You just do that if there's no reaction. Definitely down. Wow. Hey. Wow, as I say. Young stag, but uh, he's been scrapping. My. But they're a sizable animal, eh? Fantastic. Oh, yes. Okay, so as I said, like this is one of those farms that we've been hunting all of pheasant season because uh, there's an astonishing amount of birds on here. And I knew that there were deer, but we just hadn't done a, a concentrated effort on going after deer. Um, so I'm really pleased that we took tonight um, just to come out and sit on the hillside and watch a deer 
And Chessie, thanks so much for spotting it. Like I was looking downhill, but the deer was behind us uphill. So yeah, I'm pumped. Like I'm really happy that we got some more venison on deck because we we're actually out of venison. And you know, obviously we got a, a whole bunch of like really good meals coming up with that meat. All right, so that was obviously a nice, beautiful, successful hunt. We got that rabbit on deck, which I'm really excited about. And at the end of the day, we also managed to get that beautiful, healthy ass young stag. We're back in the yard, back in the outdoor kitchen. And today we're lighting up this thing for the very first time. This is the food over fire, live fire table, which is a, a really, a, just an exciting piece of kit to be, to be working with. Um, it's very versatile. Um, there's a whole lot of different cooking options on here that we can do and we're just getting this thing going for the first time and what we're going to do today is we're going to cook the rabbit that we shot on the farm over a uh, rotisserie setup on this fire pit. Alrighty so while we get the fire cranking on this I'm just going to show you how I made the marinade for the rabbit. The rabbit's been sitting in that marinade for 24 hours and well here's how we did it. All right, for the marinade, begin with copious amounts of fresh garlic. Add some salt and pepper, and give the whole lot a good bash around in the old pestle and mortar. Next, we add half a cup of finely diced white onion and give it more bashing, bashing, and bashing. Then, we quite simply scrape the whole lot from the pestle and mortar into a bowl, add some olive oil, some finely chopped fresh parsley, and the juice of half a freshly squeezed lemon. Today's special is the chicken rub seasoning from the Four Sourcemen, of which we add liberal amounts also for some zinc. And then give it a good stir around. And of course, add more olive oil because I didn't add enough in the first place. And then give the thighs of the bunnies some scoring for maximum absorption. Next, quite simply spoon the mixture over the rabbit and then use the mixture and your fat German fingers to give that naked bunny the time of its life. Right, so I said here we have the rabbit which has been marinating um, overnight in the fridge and all those nice garlicky flavors are just getting into the meat. This here is the Espetu Sul um, rotisserie kit okay and with the extension piece here it's perfect for the live fire table because it'll just quite nicely sit in one of the grooves and we'll just be able to like very slowly rotate which is obviously the meaning of rotisserie so slowly rotate that rabbit over the fire um, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna grab that bunny and <laughs> I'm gonna figure out because I haven't done this before how to nicely truss it onto this device and then we're just gonna set it straight over the fire we're gonna rake some of those coals underneath it and we're just going to very very slowly roast that bunny i want to say uh, probably three hours or so um until this well you'll see that'll look beautiful fire cooking always one of those things that requires a little bit of learning and fiddling around i haven't used this table before so we're just very much trying to figure out the settings and where the, uh, the rotisserie's got to go, we're using the birdcage for the other rabbit. Um, we've hung a pineapple, I'm sort of trying to very lightly smoke a little bit of cheese at the top. The idea with this thing is essentially that you can have a fire cranking on one side and then have things cooking on the other side where you want it to be a little bit cooler and you just periodically take a little bit of the hot coals and just rake them across underneath where you're cooking, which is, which is the beauty of the design. You can move things around, you can have a fire going and you can, you can sort of create your own hot zones and cool zones. But, you know, uh, essentially what we're looking for is we're looking for a place where you can sort of, like just in terms of heat, where you can hold your hand for roughly three seconds, three to four seconds, and that's a good place to sort of slowly cook your meat away. Um, the rabbit is definitely starting to gain a little bit of color, and you can sort of nicely see that oil sizzling on top of it. It's just a, it's just a joy, you know, like fire, sunny Sunday afternoon for the most part, and just sort of slowly having these bunnies roast away. It's an exciting way to cook. So naturally when fire cooking basting is generally always a good idea for a lot of the cooks that we do i use a, like a um, just simple apple juice and i spritz it on uh, today i want to do something a little bit different so we've got a nice little basting brush from fresh rosemary here which adds a little bit of uh, fragrance and flavor all on its own just melting down some butter and some garlic i'm going to add a little bit more of this uh, four sourceman um, chicken rub seasoning to that as well 
mix it all in, let it cook for a little while, and then we're going to start using that buttery liquid to baste the rabbit as we go. Right, so the reason why basting meats is always a good idea as you're going is because it just keeps on adding uh, both flavor and moisture to the meat, you know, so it, it stops it from drying out, which specifically game meat wants to dry out. So always, always, always keep adding a little bit of something to the cook. As you might have noticed that we've removed the, the other bunny from the birdcage and actually just put one of the grill elements into it which these grill elements can pretty much go anywhere on this grill. Uh, sort of just set it over a, a hide where you can sort of nicely grill away slowly over the flames. The birdcage was just a little awkward, it was sort of just crammed in there so we took that off and just laid it on there. The base is sitting here, that pineapple is sort of getting nice and black as we go and that main bunny on that rotisserie is just it's just bubbling away, like just <laughs> very sexy, in my in my opinion. What I'm looking for is obviously I want brownness on the rabbit. I, I want to see that basting liquid bubbling up, and very very slowly but surely we should be getting to the point where that meat will sort of just flake off the bones. Right on, Mr. Roger Rabbit has been very slowly turning over the fire for the last three and a half hours and got to be honest looking delightful now I don't actually know if you're aware but rabbit is actually white meat it's a lot like chicken so I try to cook it like chicken you know and this is exactly what I would be doing with a rotisserie chicken nice and slow basting it and just sort of giving it that fire rotisserie treatment um, in any case this guy is done actually both of these guys are done so we're going to pull this off of the grill right now, take it over to our board and see what it's like. Mm. So like I said, Rabbit is a lot like chicken. You gotta sort of think about it in those terms as well. And of course, it's not like juicy farm raised chickens because these are active animals. Running around the farm, moving their muscles, eating a natural diet. So it's like a, a lean chicken, but it's white meat and it really lends itself to absorbing those kind of lemony, buttery, herby flavors. And that's beautiful. You know, especially here in New Zealand, a lot of guys will turn their noses up at rabbit, which I will never understand. I think it's one of those like totally overlooked, beautiful to eat, beautiful to cook, delicious meat. And like, you know, I'm gonna enjoy the heck out of this. Taking a good amount of time, it's coming off the bone easily. A little bit crispy on the outside. You could peel it off and stick it in a sandwich if you wanted to, or into a salad. Or just really, oops, well, the dog's gonna enjoy that one. <laughs> really just enjoy it straight off the bone. Mm. There you go. Rotisserie rabbit, straight off the bone. <laughs>